Hey Velomobile fans, from time to time I see comments from Velomobile and environmental enthusiasts in online forums passionately claiming that Velomobiles are about to revolutionize transportation as the ultimate solution to the traffic congestion and pollution created by automobiles. I myself am an avid cyclist and Velomobile rider and I thought this would be an interesting topic to discuss. When I consider a perspective, I think it's important to consider what the existing problem is and what solutions are available to address that problem, and then what are the needs of the user and their willingness to consider alternatives. The problem in this case, of course, is climate change, driven at least in part by pollution from vehicles, combined with limited resources, high fuel prices, and traffic congestion in larger cities. Those invested in addressing these issues are searching for solutions, and some see Velomobiles as the answer. So, what do Velomobiles offer that could revolutionize transportation? Velomobiles have existed in some form since the Velocars built by Moshe around the time of World War II. Often early models were two-seaters called sociables. They tended to be heavy and not especially fast, but they did have practical features like space for two people and cargo. Serial production of Velomobiles didn't begin until 1983 with the Lytra out of Denmark, followed by the aluminum elevator, and finally modern fiberglass and carbon shell single-seater monocoque Velomobiles. The biggest advantage of a Velomobile, of course, is human-powered speed. <coughs> Modern designs have sought to refine aerodynamics, sometimes at the cost of cargo space and rider size to allow a fit rider to cruise on quality flat pavement anywhere from 40 to 60 kilometers an hour, depending on the level of fitness and infrastructure quality. Even a very average rider can cruise over 30 kilometers an hour on flat, smooth roads. Further advantages are protection from bad weather, some degree of crash protection due to the shell around the rider, greater visibility in most traffic situations compared at least to a traditional bicycle, and depending on the model, more cargo capacity than traditional bike panniers. In essence, a Velomobile has the potential to be a small one-person car replacement that doesn't need fuel, doesn't require plugging in to recharge, can be potentially maintained on your own, and doesn't require insurance, road tax, or a license. Given that potential, you'd be forgiven for wondering why after 43 years of serial production you rarely, if ever, see a Velomobile. In fact, at peak production, maybe 400 Velomobiles were built in a year, and in the last couple of years, production has fallen off to perhaps half that many. So what's the deal? I think the biggest barrier is the perception of price relative to value. A new Velomobile will cost you anywhere from 8 to 14 or 15,000 euros. For that price, you can often find a serviceable car, although that car does come with recurring costs to operate. Even a used Velomobile often starts at four to 5,000 euros. While you can buy an aluminum elevator kit for around that price or a bit less, most people aren't prepared to assemble their own Velomobile in their spare time. People also tend to prefer to fit in with the crowd. Velomobiles don't exactly blend in and they aren't very common. The majority of Velomobiles being produced are single rider and lack the ability to stash a kit or two in the back to drop off at activities. There's also been a trend lately towards more compact Velomobiles with less luggage capacity, so shopping for a family might mean exceeding cargo capacity and larger items would require hauling a trailer. More and more people are moving to cities. Visibility in city traffic isn't quite as ideal. It can be hard to see around parked cars and Velomobiles are less visible when directly next to a car. Start and stop in traffic is not especially efficient with a Velomobile because of the 25 to 30 kilogram weight. Dealers are not as common and not every bike shop is willing to or comfortable with working on a Velomobile. Often riders need to do their own maintenance and not everyone is capable of doing that. Velomobiles require a certain degree of athleticism starting with getting in and out and then with the actual act of riding. That limits the suitability for those that are less able-bodied. Then there's the hard reality that people just like convenience. They don't want to pedal hard and arrive at their destination bathed in sweat. Safety, or at least the perception of safety, plays a role as well. Velomobiles, in my experience, are safer than a traditional bike, but given their size and large turning circle, their efficiency is limited on bike paths and 
unless you live someplace like the Netherlands, you probably don't have a lot of good cycling infrastructure. It can be intimidating to ride a velomobile or any type of bike for that matter in traffic with the ever-increasing size of the vehicles. For decades, a segment of society has been saying if prices go up enough, people will stop driving. But the reality is that no price seems too high for the convenience of a car. Does this mean all is lost and society will continue its nosedive into increasing vehicle sizes? No, not necessarily. What it does mean, though, is that those of us that choose to cycle need to step up our encouragement and support for others to join us, starting with young people. Set an example for them by cycling every opportunity you get. Oftentimes it's getting started that's most intimidating, so invite them to ride with you and find out what it's like and how to cycle safely. Get involved in advocating for more investment in cycle infrastructure where you live. Having safe places to cycle, especially places that connect residential and commercial areas, will help people feel more comfortable choosing a bike as an option. And finally, be supportive. There are more people that would like to cycle, but we need to acknowledge that it's a change for them and help them work through their concerns. As for velomobiles, I don't think they're going to revolutionize transportation anytime soon. However, I do think they have a place in the arsenal of transportation options. For those that live in areas where they can take advantage of the aerodynamics and weather protection of a velomobile, for instance, here in Zeeland in the Netherlands, a velomobile could be a logical car alternative, especially for commuting longer distances. However, there are lots of other great bike options as well, including cargo bikes and e-bikes. No one type of bike is going to work for every situation, so the goal should be to help more people start cycling regardless of what they're riding. So, get out there and start encouraging and advocating for cycling. As always, thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.